Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Newman. I'm Professor of Space Law and Policy at the University of Northumbria in Newcastle in the United Kingdom. I'm also International Space Law Advisor for Cold Star Technologies. I listen to the Cold Star Project. The show is for entertainment purposes only and is not intended to be what is termed professional advice. The Cold Star Project is proudly presented by the Operational Excellence Society. Cold Star Tech is a supporter of the OPEX Society and Jason Gannigan is a member of its board of advisors. Talk with us at Cold Star Tech to find out more about the OPEX Society and what we can achieve together in your organization. Or just visit opexsociety.org. Thanks for joining us for today's show. Today's guest is Katie Billick, co-founder and partner at GovMates. We're going to learn a lot about GovMates, which is a very, very useful service for defense and space contractors, uh, small companies especially, looking to team and partner with larger organizations, uh, maybe primes. Katie started out at the University of Texas at Austin, where uh, many of our guests have begun their careers, and that was neat to find out. Uh, with the uh, education in finance and Spanish and got into equity trading and sales at Goldman Sachs. Did that for a number of years. I uh, was senior vice president at Republic Capital Access, so she learned a lot about government contract financing. Where does the money come from? How does that all work? And that led her and uh, her co-founder to create GovMates in 2015. And so we're going to get right into that. Katie, welcome. All right. So let's ask this question to start off with. Um, why did you co-found GovMates? Um, you know, I know there's always a significant gulp factor in founding any organization. So I, I take it you saw a need and then um, you had to go do something. So how did that work? Sure. So at GovMates, our passion lies with helping small businesses and non-traditional defense contractors. So um, by virtue of where I was in the federal ecosystem, I was constantly interacting with small businesses, small and emerging government contractors. Um, and I was increasingly approached by the large integrators and primes asking for introductions to good small business teaming partners. And um, I got so many of those calls and requests from large companies. I said, gee, doesn't Boeing or Raytheon, don't they have their own supplier database they can go to? Um, or isn't there some sort of government website that they can use as a resource? And the answer is yes, but they're not incredibly user-friendly resources and the data may be stale. So that's where um, myself and, and my business partner, Stephanie Alexander, we just said, let's build it, let's create it. Um, and so that's where we got the idea for GovMates in that we joke about being like bash.com for GovCon, but that's not a bad analogy. So that in that we are creating a very user-friendly database whereby we are taking a formulaic and methodical approach to those teaming and procurement introductions. So that if Boeing, as an example, needs an SDVUSB with a TS clearance and precision machining capabilities, our platform could uh, incorporate relevant scoring and match up the small business that is the best fit for their teaming needs. Um, so it's not rocket science by any means of what we're doing, but we were, we've been very disciplined in our approach and processes to, to matchmaking. So um, how we got our start, I mean, simply we just started getting us approached by a lot of the, a lot of folks in industry looking for partners. So we decided we would come up with a solution for it. Very cool. Very cool. And what background do you personally have that you um, use to like empower making this decision? Sure. So um, my background is actually in finance. I actually started my career on Wall Street. Um, I was uh, in Silicon Valley, actually, um, at Goldman Sachs, um, and I was covering um, large, large tech funds, tech investors, hedge funds, venture capital funds um, who are investing in the technology space. Um, so I eat, sleep, breathe kind of that language. Um, fast forward to when my husband got moved to Quantico, that was the catalyst for me to move out to the D.C. area. Um, so taking my financing background, um, I ended up at a firm that provides financing to government contractors. So um, my career uh, effectively became the intersection between finance and GovCon um, and spent years um, in, in the GovCon community, largely with small businesses and in innovative emerging federal contractors and providing them financing. Um, so as I learned to speak the GovCon language while also still preserving my financing language, um, that's where ultimately I came across the idea to build GovMates um, in that being in the ecosystem, it's, if you're in DC, if you're within the Beltway, you'll learn that it's a very small community um, and everyone kind of ultimately knows each other. Um, but we just said there needs to be another tool 
here in this ecosystem to help mm. the small business community. Yeah. Well, from what you've said so far, it sounds like you get pretty granular too, right? In, in uh, figuring out who's a member and what features they have as an organization and that. Um, tell us a bit about how membership in GovMates works. Sure. So for any, any small business or non-traditional, it is free to join. Um, our intention there is to keep the barriers to entry as low as possible. Um, so you simply visit our website, GovMates.com, and create a profile. Uh, in that profile, we collect anything and everything that is relevant from a teaming and procurement perspective. So your capabilities, your customer past performance, contract vehicles, NAICS codes, clearances, certifications, all that kind of stuff. Uh, after which you're then eligible for the teaming and procurement introductions. So that on the flip side, when we do receive a request from a large systems integrator or a defense prime or a government agency, um, you are eligible for those introductions based upon the nature of the request that is coming in. Um, so again, it is a formulaic and methodical approach. Um, we, we like to say that our approach is buyer driven. So it is driven by the requirements holder, the one who is supporting the end users, the stakeholders, who has the customer need. And they are coming to us simply because there may be a gap on their team. Um, there's a hole that they need to fill. There is a capability that they are seeking. Um, in some cases, we have uh, buyers coming to us looking for a specific contract vehicle and or a socioeconomic set aside. Um, in some cases, it could be a large integrator where all of a sudden a procurement that they were following ended up being flipped from bull and open to say SDVOSB set aside. And they need a good SDVOSB partner who has certain capabilities with that, um, ideally with past performance with that one customer. Um, so that they can team with them and actually pursue that work. Um, so the user interface for members is relatively clean and seamless. Um, I think one important question that we always get asked is, all right, so who has access to the data? And to be clear, um, members only have access to their own profile. Um, they are able to log into their profile and update the profile as regularly as they see fit. Um, but the database itself is not outwardly queryable to the public or to anyone else. Um, and we did that for a variety of reasons. Um, one, we don't want people spamming you and trying to sell you stuff. Uh, but two, and probably most importantly, from a security perspective, um, we don't want, you know, foreign sources and nefarious actors kind of diving into and Googling your profile. Not that we're collecting anything proprietary by any means. So pretty much all the data that we are collecting is probably available on your company's website. Um, it's just in a very um, consolidated and condensed form in our database. So we at GovMates, we are the gatekeepers, we are the matchmakers, um, and we are the ones facilitating those introductions. Um, so you can rest assured if you're um, being matched by us, it's because someone came to us um, and we are essentially vetting that request and matching you up because they have a teaming opportunity. Once that intro comes, it's up to you to pursue that opportunity and decide if you want to team with them or not. Um, but our goal for our members is to help increase their visibility for teaming and procurement opportunities in the federal space. Very cool. So how long has, has GovMates been around? When did you start setting up the infrastructure and collecting the, the membership data and matching? Sure, so we've been around um, for five years now. Um, we originally just launched the platform to facilitate matches and teaming introductions. Fast forward to today, we have over uh, 29,000 uh, matches made and over 5,000 teaming and procurement introductions made. Um, a few years in, after inception, we launched the conference platform. People always ask, okay, so if your platform is free to your members, how do you get paid? How do you make money? Um, so how we make money is off of the conference platform, um, and that is a tool whereby we get hired usually by government agencies or large scale conference planners to run matchmaking um, en masse at an event, be it virtual or in person. Um, so some great examples of our customers that we've supported providing the conference matchmaking capability, uh, NASA, FAA, GSA, Homeland Security, DLA, NIST MEP. Um, in all of those scenarios, we are providing um, a, a turnkey kind of matchmaking solution where we have a scheduling tool synced into that. Um, and we are facilitating one-on-one -on -one matchmaking sessions between um, buyers 
be those government procurement reps or large integrators of primes with industry, which are usually small businesses and our members. Um, so what we love about this model is that it enables us to provide a truly value add service um, to the conference host, be that again, a government agency or say a trade association or nonprofit, um, as well as bring value to our members and to the small businesses who are participating in those matchmaking events. Um, and it keeps it free in most cases to our membership to participate in those events. So, so that is a win-win. Uh, and ultimately we can produce metrics for a given conference planner or, or host. So with NASA, as an example, um, for their industry day, we hosted over a four hour period, 496 one-on-one -on -one matchmaking sessions between NASA procurement reps from the various space centers um, and small businesses within industry. So that is an incredible statistic. And across those meetings, we had a variety of different capabilities and, and technologies represented from uh, manufacturing and precision machining to alloys and metals and, and prototyping capabilities to program management and acquisition support of space programs. So um, the capabilities within our member base runs the spectrum, but it enables us to support a really diverse group of small businesses um, who are all working towards the same goal to support the federal government. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, you know, and you mentioned uh, the user interface a few minutes ago, and it got me thinking. Uh, I was going back to an interview I did with the founder of New Space Hub, which is a database collecting members, and that that is open for querying and that. Um, and talking with John about the, his process of iterating that, n not even the, the outside, but the, even the whole structure. So over five years, what can you tell us about the iterative process of that? Um, does it suck up a lot of your time or did it, I guess, previously and talking about like, like we need more, like talking to programmers, right? We need more fields here to collect uh, that granular data. Um, or you can cut this off, right? Uh, I worked for an Inc. top one, well, 500 franchise business at one point in my career. And we had a database that uh, an outside contractor came in and, and we just talked with them and every month we iterated more features in that, right? So I'm curious what your process has been like. I am always thinking about the technology. Um, the platform um, has definitely evolved over time. Um, I would say, um, yes, once it comes to the actual um, use of the platform and, and being pragmatic in approach over time, we learned there were certain fields that weren't necessarily relevant from a teaming and procurement perspective. Um, also, as time has gone on there, we have seen um, a slew of different requirements coming down from government certifications that are needed. Um, CMMC is a great example of something that has reared its head and will be a certification um, and that will be data that we will be collecting from our members. So we've had the need over time to modify fields in the profiles. Um, so that we can collect data that is then in turn helpful to um, those potential teaming partners. Um, as we've done more work in the precision machining and manufacturing community, there are obviously some certification, certifications there that are more applicable to manufacturing firms. So that led us to, to add fields such as ISO um, and CMMI as an example. So, um, as we support new customers and kind of branch out into various subsectors within the federal contracting industry, um, the, the platform itself has evolved over time. Um, the platform also has a reporting function. So we generate reports of profiles anytime uh, someone comes to us with a match request. And so the nature of those reports has also evolved over time and the data that it includes. Um, so ultimately, um, I would say there's there's two different things that we're constantly managing to. We have the technology platform itself, um, which is this, its own entity, right? And that is constantly evolving. On top of that, we use that tech platform to engage with all of our members. So the other side of it is the engagement and the outreach component, the human element. So we like to talk about how we are essentially combining the best practices from tech, not the tech side, as well as the human element to facilitate matchmaking within the federal community. Um, so while I'm always thinking about the tech piece and making sure the platform evolves with us, it's important to incorporate the human element side of things. 
Um, one great example is initially um, we had built into the platform the ability to collect requirements um, from buyers, from potential buyers in a, a, a web-based form. Um, and we thought that, well, if you know Boeing or Lockheed, if they're seeking that teaming partner, great. Here's a very user-friendly form um, to input that data in with fields that were you know, logical, capabilities, customer past performance, contract vehicles, all optional, but fill in whatever fields make sense. Um, and over time, we found that the buyers never used the form. Instead, they would call us or just send us an email telling us what they needed. Um, so ultimately, we just archived the form because no one was using it. Um, and we thought, you know, what is easiest to uh, the, the buyers, right? And oftentimes, well, at least pre-COVID, you would have buyers constantly on the road, traveling, you know, at conferences, at events, just walked out of a customer's office, and they're sending us requests saying, hey, I need this or that. They don't have time to go to a website. They're simply shooting us an email or calling us. Um, so that's kind of incorporating the human element side of things. Once we receive that requirement, be it by email or whatever, whatever mode of communication it comes to us, uh, LinkedIn message, then from there, we will incorporate the technology and, and running the search. So one of the things that we've learned is you just have to uh, be pragmatic and adapt to the audience and, and the users. Um, and while the, the database itself, um, again, we've been very disciplined about the, the information that we collect from our small business members, the intake of requirements, um, that is, th that, that's, that's where you incorporate the human element. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was really insightful, right? Like how people, you want people to use it a certain way, whatever it is, right? <laughs> Go, as soon as you put it out into the wild, they're like, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. Um, did that force you to bring on staff or did you end up like managing all the inquiries um, with you and your co-founder or how, how did that turn out? Or do you, do you automate it in some way? Um, yeah, so we over over time we have hired, so we have a program analyst and we have we do have headcount. Um, we've tried to streamline a lot of our processes as much as possible. Um, and one of our, our most recent contract award where we are supporting um, 17 OTA consortia, that really drove the demand for us to, to hire. Um, but ultimately, um, a lot of this we've been uh, very lean um, and we've been able to manage a bulk of this ourselves. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is really useful info for anybody developing any kind of program and especially some sort of two sided database thing like this. Um, so who's the right kind of person to be signing up for membership like what stage should their business be at do they need top secret security clearance or, or what. Um, great question. Um, I would say anyone who is interested in pursuing work in the federal space, we would love to have you as a member. Um, you know, if you are a uh, a barber shop and you're in the commercial space, um, you, I'm sure you probably do great work, but not a good fit for our membership. Um, but if you've got a product or a service that is applicable to the US government, um, be it in DOD or the civilian world, then you're eligible to become a member. Um, we have in our membership uh, over 4,000 small businesses and non-traditional defense contractors. We have members in all 50 states, plus Guam, plus Puerto Rico, and a handful of foreign, foreign actual foreign countries. Um, capabilities span the waterfront. Anything from program management and acquisition support and logistics, um, all the way to higher end type of capabilities, AI and machine learning and robotics, you name it. Um, we want people who are interested in teaming and, and collaborating. Um, so if you don't care to team, then, then you're probably not going to see us as a resource that, that's valuable. Um, but we believe that teaming and collaboration, that's really kind of the lifeblood of the federal community and how so many small businesses get their start uh, in the federal marketplace is through teaming. And it can either be with other small businesses um, or with the large integrators or primes. Um, by being a part of this community, um, you gain matchmaking and teaming opportunities. You also gain the training and educational support that we provide, uh, as well as other kind of networking and engagement events. So again, as I mentioned earlier, our passion lies with those small businesses and non-traditional. So we hope that our membership shares the same values as well. 
Right. Now you say teaming, and I, I, I want to be clear on the definition of this term, um, because some people have intellectual property, right? And they're terrified to share that. Um, should they be feeling comfortable about, about releasing that and sharing that with their partners? So it depends on what stage in that teaming conversation you are at. So I would say where we are involved um, in the teaming conversations is really be very front end, right? So we are that coffee date. <laughs> we are setting that up to determine, is it even worth having follow on conversations? Um, but if we match you up and you have that conversation with a potential partner, and it seems like there is a viable opportunity you want to pursue together, then NDA it up, <laughs> sign right. that NDA, and then, then start to have conversations once you feel like the appropriate documentation is in place. Um, but I'm not endorsing that you share anything proprietary by any means um, until you know it's it's a serious partner and it actually warrants that discussion. All right. Okay. And the members do not need TS clearance, right? No. Um, it, it's it's helpful information that that we do collect, but um, by no means are you required to have a clearance to be uh, a member of GovMains. Okay. Now, Katie, we've talked a little bit about the UI and, and members, new members of it need to sign up and go through a process of uh, filling in some info on that because you need to get the data right for your database and do the matchmaking. Um, let's, let's explore this. What kind of mistakes do you see new members uh, who are signing up make, right? Um, how can we stop or, or help them not make those mistakes? And like, how, how long should a person expect to sit at their computer clicking this and typing in that, right, to, uh, to set their company up? Sure, so it only takes about 15 minutes to create a profile. Um, everything that we are collecting would essentially, would essentially be available um, in your capability statement or on your company website. Uh, to answer your question, what's a common mistake that people make, um, I would say, we are, we are focused on you know, really keywords um, within certain categories, such as capabilities. So if I ask you, what are your capabilities? What I expect you to say would be say data analytics, systems integration, program management, acquisition support, information assurance. So those types of phrases, as opposed to what sometimes you see people saying is that, we are a best in class organization that provides the best service to our customers. And while I'm sure that is true, um, it doesn't help us to match you based upon capability. So when you fill out the profile, speak to your actual capabilities, what technologies or capabilities that you may have. Um, also um, under the customers category, you can speak to your customer past performance, who you've done work for, um, if you have commercial past performance, we love to hear that um, because it shows that you've crossed, you know, you're, you've operated within the commercial and the federal um, space. Um, usually that means that you're open to teaming and collaboration. It can also show that um, you may have some type of a product that is truly applicable to the federal space that maybe hasn't been explored just yet. Um, so we love to see past performance within the commercial realm um, because we often find that's a differentiating factor when you know, a prime say is looking at past performance of, you know, a handful of different partners. Um, and you have folks who have, while the federal past performance is indeed very helpful in a lot of cases, sometimes it's also helpful to have a good mix of past performance um, because um, that is a differentiating factor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So folks, <laughs> if you're thinking about signing up for a membership and remember it's free to you and you should, uh, if, you're, if you're a fit with the profile, get the meat ready right uh for cold star you know process improvement data science fraud prevention these are phrases that would be easy i believe to drop right in there um i've got to clean our website up <laughs> exactly what we're doing so we're shifting a little bit all the time before but uh, we will we will eventually sign up well and jason um, one thing yeah. to add is yeah. that every time once you complete a profile with us um we actually review every profile that comes in so we want to make sure that your profile does indeed look good for matchmaking, that it has the right phrases and keywords. And so if it doesn't, we'll let you know, we'll coach you to what we think should be in there. Um, so we wanna make sure that the data that is coming in, that it is good and relevant from a teaming mm -hmm. perspective. Right, yeah, and it, it, you don't want a useless <laughs> record as well, right? That doesn't serve anybody. So that's, that's good stuff. Um, but folks, come at this with a sales and marketing mindset, right? You are uh, yes. you're trying to get 
that coffee date. <laughs> Sitting there thinking you look pretty is not going to do <laughs> enough all by itself, right? So, okay. Let's finish up with this, Katie. Uh, you know, you mentioned GovMates have been around for five years. Let's imagine, let's project 10 years into the future now. Uh, how do you see GovMates inform and function then? Has it grown? Are there any changes in the strategic direction? What would you like to see happen? Great question. Um, such such a tough question to answer. Um, who knows what the future holds, especially in this in this current environment. Um, I would say one thing we are most excited about is our recent contract and support of the innovation ecosystem, um, where we are supporting 17 OTA consortia under ATI, Advanced Technology International. So looking five years into the future, I would love to, to see us um, being just more immersed in the innovation ecosystem helping to provide thought leadership amongst the non-traditional and small business community. Um, I think we are, where we are as an industry um, facing the geopolitical issues that we do, I think right now we, are, we as a nation are struggling in that we know that innovation stems from the small business and the non-traditional community, yet we're also faced with the reality of like there are security and supply chain issues within the small business community. So, how can we as a nation procure those innovative technologies from the small businesses without endangering the entire supply chain, the entire ecosystem? So that is a conversation that is ongoing. And that is, you know, we've seen as a result of that, the various executive orders um, that will eventually result in changes to the FAR that will impact small businesses. The question is, what is the pragmatic approach to engaging small businesses? And there's no easy answer to that right now. And we are st still trying to determine what is the answer to that question. Um, but that is very much where I see GovMates being at the intersection of that conversation. We want to help find that solution by virtue of us um, being immersed in the small business community um, amongst non-traditionals in this ecosystem. We want to help find that answer because we believe that innovation exists and stems from the non-traditional community. So we need to find ways to do business with them in an effective and an efficient manner um, in a way that protects everyone, yet it still benefits and supports the end mission. Mm -hmm. So that's where I see us being in five years. And uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep our fingers crossed that we stay on this track. Right. I really like that. Yeah. So and, and you got me thinking now, like, okay, how does that thought leadership look, right? Um, you've got conferences already going on. That's a chance to present something, um, some sort of written thing, obviously, blogs and, and uh, articles and that kind of thing, video maybe. Uh, and then saying, look, here's a safe space inside of GovMate's ecosystem where we can pull in that innovation and share it and <laughs> nothing terrible is going to happen, right? So... That's good stuff. Um, but let's finish up. Uh, Katie, how can people contact you and uh, and find out more about GovMates and sign up? Sure. Um, so learning more about us, you can simply visit our website, GovMates.com. Um, and Jason, my, my email address is just Katie at GovMates.com. So feel free to shoot me an email and happy to answer any questions. Great. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Jason. I hope you enjoyed our episode and discussion with Katie Billick today about GovMates. Thanks for joining us. If you're looking for help with transitioning from, say, a purely uh, defense contractor, government contractor role into having a commercial side for your business, talk to us at Cold Start Tech. There are shifts that you and your people are going to have to make. And the things that you were doing that made you successful as a government contractor are different from those that are required to be a success as a commercial business. And I'm talking values, principles, culture, processes. And not only the things you do, but the things you think about and the things that you hold up as valuable. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm Jason Canigan, the founder of Cold Star Tech, or go to coldstartech.com and find out more there. Thanks for listening.